Some say he's a true visionary of our time. Others say he's a bumbling hack. No matter your opinion of him, he certainly turned heads, bodies, and even some people's knees. In this exclusive, he discusses his latest work and gives us insight into his fragmented mind while simultaneously leaving more questions than answers. I don't recall asking for salt. This is Peter. I really wanted to make a piece of Hock and Back to my grandfather's avant garde sponge to fund work. Even though he was blind and had to clap, he managed to win awards. There's a term for what I do. Such as the plant for the fromage fair petit but tough and fatal, which roughly translates as I didn't mean to not cover your vase, Doris. Please forgive my centre of gravity. I feel it has some red bones here. I try to engage the audience by using and destroying full stops in more scenes because people love food more than they want plots, exploding who cares, and that they want children. It creates drama that they can relate to. It is real. Cold homo. Well, okay. As as also, I was ready to hit most food, so it was catharsis in, in a way. Uh, confusion is an element uh, essential to my work. I endeavour to recreate the feeling of a small vole being trapped in a particularly vicious porridge that had in turn been carefully poured into a child's blues ego. When is the fruit? It's upstairs. It's not striking. My assistant producer, uh, Bertram Lector Plea, once asked me to introduce a new straight character to the story. I told him, what makes you think you can speak to me? He left shortly after that, creative differences. And then was found dead in a ditch two weeks later, covered in wearing placenta. It's just... that is a chair. Oh, tragic, tragic. I did construct a script for this film, but he insists on getting instructions in French to the English cast, just to keep them on their toes. The confusion, fear and shambling failure to grasp reality portrayed on screen comes from their real-life emotions. It's all about being real. And what is more real than a man performing life-threatening stunts, whilst wearing a ridiculous outfit and not knowing why? Why? That was not what we're looking for at all. We're really up to the sound of a vomiting sparrow? I'm sorry, I'm a bit confused. I thought I was in the pantry. Oh. Uh, the budget was incredibly tight for this film. As I shot it outside my home country. I personally had to service badgers and other wildlife in Yorkshire for the extra funds. It is the kind of thing that scars you, both physically and mentally. But I use it as an inspiration for some of the more powerful scenes. I am, after all, a artist. I found the actors during this time who were willing to work for a handful of old growths and a 35mm early spanner that once belonged to famous playwright Donald Sinden's pet mechanic. Life is like a long piece of string. Well. That showed me. Very boring to look at, and a challenge to eat unless covered in Hollandaise. <laughs> Life is easy and easy end, because you get so old that you forget who you are, where you are, and to conduct yourself in a public. This is why my grandfather stays in dolls all day and yells at Lerog. I demand fruit loops that taste like my childhood. He inspired me to create as much as I can before I get to that stage. I introduce some subtext into a scene or two, mostly to keep those dreadful livers off my back. Blah. Everyone loves politics, so I went into the terror with the grace and subtle temperament of Godzilla's early morning battle movement. I have no time to beat about the bush. Some of the more intellectually banged out critics have asked me if I use drugs to get inspiration for my work. My reply is always this. Have you ever tried making a film while so bare? Isn't that kind of dangerous? Where is these? Uh, I they usually go so long to get after that. Right. I seem to have that effect on people. Maybe it is the spitting cobbler I keep secreted away in my breast pocket. I made a masterpiece? Well, they say the artist has never had pee with his own work, except Etienne Duplond, famous for the raging Blamer Super Movement in the 40s. But I am confident that this film breaks and won all something. At some point. We I guess I'll have Amy. Global warming once and for all. If other filmmakers dislike it, I guess it's it, Amy. If Chris seeks dislike it, I consider it a win. My God, Al Gore was right all along. Well, that doesn't help my hepatitis now, does it, Reg? If Timothy from the Pesati dislikes it, ah, fuck him, he makes bread. What does it know about the silly bloop?